Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I love getting viewer suggestions, and this one was a really interesting one. So thank you for the idea of doing a comparison between the FAA NOTAM formatting and ICAO NOTAM formatting, because as I found out in doing research for this video, the FAA projects that they're going to be changing NOTAM formatting to standardize with ICAO and basically using ICAO formatting for all NOTAMs, possibly in late 2025. Now, they did say this was happening in 2024, and it didn't happen. So the timing on this, I don't really know. But it was very interesting when I did the deep dive into trying to learn more about ICAO standardization. So I will put some links in the video description because... The information is out there in a slightly piecemeal fashion. For example, let's talk about the actual standardization ICAO's formatting. Um, there is a very nice brochure, one page, that was designed for pilots that was posted by the FAA. Again, I'll link to that in the video description. It's a nice PDF. You can download it. But it doesn't explain everything. In fact, it leaves a whole bunch of stuff completely not explained. And as an aircraft dispatcher, I like to know what all the codes mean. Maybe that's just how I am. I just like to learn. But anyway, so uh, let's break this down first. Again, I took this from the FAA's NOTAM brochure for pilots, but we have some good information available here. So the beginning is a series, which in my looking at this, it seems to basically mirror the FAA type of NOTAM stuff, at least at the beginning part, the numbering part, but then things kind of get a little bit different. Um, then you have an area where we have a NOTAM and then it looks like a weird typo that goes with the action from the NOTAM. So we're going we're to get to that in a second. Uh, but this line here, this qualifier line, I can make sense of some of it. Like this is a clearly a ATC or ARTCC Center in the United States, but some of this, I was like, what in the world is all that? Okay, so we're going to do dive into that. Um, let's start off, though, with the bit about the series. Okay, so the series, and I have found this, again, same source, so we do have a series. So B tells basically what it's going to be about. Um, there is like no way. There are so many new codes to the ICAO formatting. I shouldn't say new to ICAO, but new to me as an FAA NOTAM user. There are so many codes. So again, I'm going to put some other links in the video description because not all of this is in the FAA's PDFs that they've released. However, the information is available out there from the FAA. But the series, we have a specific series, what the NOTAM is about. And this NOTAM, if you look at it, is about... We go back. It's it's going to be about something apparently that has to do with runways or taxiways. Okay, so that's the first part about it. Next, you have what I mentioned, the NOTAM action. Okay, I'm sorry, backing up. And then the numbering, I believe it is going to be similar to the FAA's current numbering system. But we'll get to that with some actual examples here in a second. Okay, uh, the next part is my action. And so this one ends with the letter N meaning it's new. So it's a new piece of information. I found many NOTAMs in my looking around at NOTAMs yesterday that were the NOTAM R replacing a previous NOTAM. What I did not find really was any of these NOTAM C, canceling previous non-auto cancel NOTAM. Okay, I have no idea what that means. I would love it if somebody would tell me who knows more about NOTAMs, but I'm assuming there was some sort of NOTAM that was not going to get canceled until a NOTAM C comes out and cancels it. So that's a little weird, but you can find it with basically whatever is the last letter in the beginning line part of the NOTAM next to the series. Okay, so now I didn't explain the Q line because I'm going to break it down with this NOTAM comparison. I'm going to assume you know how to read NOTAMs if you're watching this video. If you don't, I will link to some other videos about I made about reading NOTAMs. Okay, so we just went to my home airport, East Texas Regional Airport. This NOTAM has been available for a while. It is about our runway being closed. Okay, so let's look at the ICAO format for the same thing. 
And you can do this side-by-side -side look at it at the FAA NOTAM search on the FAA's website. So the numbering is the same. Notice I don't know why there is no series, at least not yet anyway. They don't seem to be putting any kind of series on the ICAO NOTAM format on the FAA's website for NOTAM searching. But we do have the action, so this is a revision of a previous NOTAM. Okay, now let me break down the Q line for you guys, because this is where it gets a little weird. Okay, so we have ZFW, so it came from ARTCC of Fort Worth Center. Okay, Q, okay, I do not know why, but all of the Q section starts with Q. Okay, they don't have any explanation why. But then you have a two-letter code and another two-letter code. Okay, so the second and third letters, MR, in this one, means it's for a movement area runway. And then LC means it is a limitation and it's closed. Okay, so the first two, well, I should actually call this letters two and three, because letter one is always Q. And then letters four and five have their own set of codes. Now, I'm going to post a link to this because I did find it at the FAA's website. And you can compare all these codes. There are so many codes. It's incredible. No way could you memorize all the codes. I, actually, I'm sure some of my viewers are extremely intelligent and you guys could memorize all the codes. But there's no way I could memorize all these codes. Even more confusing, I found that sometimes the four and five part have same code as two, three letters here, but they actually mean different things. So that was like even more busting my brain when I looked at this yesterday. So be careful with that. Okay, so like I said, MR, I looked it up, means it's a movement area runway and LC, it's a limitation and something's closed. Okay, well, that does make sense because this is runway 1331, it's closed. Okay, all right, so that's that part. Now, IV, all right. This part makes a little more sense to me. This is IFR traffic and VFR traffic. Okay, yeah, that would make sense. A runway closure applies to both IFR and VFR traffic. So we have I for IFR and V for VFR. Okay, and then we have this other NBO thing. N is, it's for immediate attention. Okay, says whoever made it. B it is for pre-flight briefing, and O, it is for flight operations. Okay, cool. Once again, these are like codes that are not in the FAA's little PDF thing. A means it's for an aerodrome. That makes sense. It's at an airport. Okay, and then you have these three-digit things. This is for what altitude, like upper and lower limit, if it were an airspace thing. So because it's at an airport, they just put 000 and 999. Now, yesterday, I bunch of, spent a bunch of time trying to find something that had actual numbers in here that was an airspace notum. I was unsuccessful. I found plenty of airspace notums that were FAA formatted, but I didn't really find any that have been correctly moved over to IKO on the FAA's website search. So for now, that does not, I couldn't find any examples, sadly. And then the last part here is my coordinates. Uh, the location. All right. So that's handy. I guess eventually you could do a georeference search. And then the radius. So it is basically five nautical mile radius around East Texas Regional Airport, which again, I don't really know why five miles. I mean, the airport is not five miles big, but whatever. Okay. So that is the Q line. Goodness. They call it the qualifier line. And we'll break down a few more in the next few ex examples. Then you have A. Okay, so that's the location. That makes sense. Okay. B is what time it started. And C is what time it goes until. So to, from this time and to. And it's the same exact thing where we have year, year, month, month, day, day, and time, hour, hour, minute, minute, and still in UTC. So that's super simple. Basically, our runway is going to be closed until June 30 at 2200 UTC. Okay. And then the text itself is under E. So that is that the runway 1331 is closed. The lower and upper limit seem to have to do 
with this part of the qualifier line. But again, I couldn't find any examples to show you guys, sadly. So that is a complete breakdown. Wow, sorry for drawing one million things all over that slide. Okay, so uh, yeah. Okay, moving on uh, to another example. Here we have an example of a nav aid that is not working. Okay, it's our ILS is also out of service because the runway construction things are all over the place out there on the runway. All right, so I'm not going to break down all this. Do, do notice it is a revised notum. They actually did revise the uh, date when our ILS, the glide slope and the localizer were put out of service. So that makes sense. Okay, uh, like I said, let's just talk about the differences. So the Q is the same. Okay, IC is a specific two letter code for the second and third digits specific to the ILS. And then four and five, here we have AS. AS is specific to mean unserviceable. Again, I did not make these codes and there are lots, lots of them. So check out the full list in the website I'm gonna to link to in video description. All right, so once again, they're saying it applies to IFR and VFR traffic. Now, to me, it's kind of confusing because I'm like, why does an ILS apply to VFR traffic? I mean, I don't really know, but okay. NBO is exactly the same. And everything else is the same here as what I just discussed, except for they have up the radius to 25 miles. I guess it makes a little more sense because yeah, an ILS is going to be more than five miles radius from the airport. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. We have the location again, when it started, when it's going until, and then what is actually going on being E, the text. Cool. Okay. So be careful though with those codes because IC and AS can mean different things if it's letters two and three or letters four and five. All right. So Interesting comparison. Um, last one I want to look at actually has to do with the FDC NOTAM because I was like, well, how are they doing these for the flight data center NOTAM? Okay, so here's a flight data center NOTAM that I found. And I've got the information here. Okay, so instead of being from a actual center, I found this interesting, even though in the FAA's coding of this, it says it came from Fort Worth Center, and I found it by searching for NOTAMs in Fort Worth Center. They're saying it's a flight data center NOTAM. Interesting. Okay, uh, here's the Q group again. So the Q is the same type of beginning thing. AR means it is an ATS route in US terminology. That's an airway, okay? And then LC means something is closed, okay? but Notice if we go back to my slide about having a closed runway, uh, we still have LC. Okay, so that's, you know, marginally same. Okay, so we still have LC in that four and five, meaning something is closed. Okay, uh, again, IFR, VFR traffic, and the same briefing information. Okay, E, instead of being for an aerodrome, means it is for en route. Once again, I found files with all the codes for this, so I will put some more description in my links in my video description. Uh, the, interestingly, they have no altitude. It's not really an airspace notum. It's actually a closure on an airway, basically telling you that part of the nav aid is not available for an airway. Okay, uh, A again is my location. So we have KZFW, which again is a little weird, but Fort Worth Center. Okay. Uh, and then you've got when it's happening. Now, this was interesting to me. It seems that some things didn't translate right. So we have when it started. It started on April um, 1st of 2024 at 1406 UTC. They're saying it's going until November 11 of 2024 at 1405 estimated to be fixed. That's ICAO, but you will notice, because I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. It should be done. Well, the FAA formatting says it's actually going to November 6 of 2026 that they estimate this is going to be not usable. I, I don't know. You know, I didn't, this is a screenshot direct. I did not retype this and type it wrong. So I don't know. Again, there's some 
issues with this translation or this comparison feature on the FAA's website. I don't know. But supposedly that, yeah, time doesn't line up and it's the date time does not line up and it's again estimated. So that part translated right, but some of the other stuff did not. Okay. And then what is going on? Okay. So in Louisiana, which is covered under Fort Worth Center, this part of it anyway, we have a route that's in Fort Worth Center. It is Victor 18 from the Monroe VOR or Vortac in Louisiana. It is the 244 degree radial to the changeover point is not authorized because the Monroe VOR is currently out of service. So you'll notice they've eliminated the whole thing with the coordinates and radius here on the queue line because it's an airway. So I went ahead and pulled this up in Sky Vector just to see what it really looked like. And so essentially along Victor 18 from my Monroe VOR over here to the changeover point, which would be in this example, halfway between the two VORs, here is the other end, the Belcher VOR. But essentially this part over here of Victor 18 is not available because Monroe VOR is out of service. Now I could still fly on it, but I'd have to use other navigation sources such as maybe GPS or RNAV system. Okay, so yeah, I, I learned a lot from all this deep dive. I kind of came to the conclusion, well, this make NOTAMs harder? Okay. I feel like yes and no. Ideally, they're going to standardize this better. I know NOTAMs are already long and sometimes very confusing with non-standardized things. The idea that they're having these Q codes at the beginning makes me think it would be better for potential AI use where an AI, I mean, even a computer at this point without even needing AI, they could sort NOTAMs a little better. For example, uh, what I mean by that, like when I'm talking about uh, the NOTAM N thing, okay, maybe we could highlight things better if it's coded right. The Q codes, that could maybe help. Maybe eventually you could sort them a little better by what kind of aircraft it applies to. That would be great. Um, if we can sort by these codes, I feel like that would be fantastic. However, it does make me wonder who's putting in the codes. You know, here's all the codes. I found this huge list of codes. So once again, I'm going to link in the video description, but this is the super detailed list from the FAA currently. Okay. Uh, this last one is another super detail, like PowerPoint, but in PDF of examples and things that the FAA published. The first two links are very high level, might be enough for you, but if you really want to do the deep dive, check out the last two. But, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to make NOTAMs harder. I mean, the idea to me is ideally we could sort these better. We could filter NOTAMs better. I personally think NOTAMs are broken right now because it's so confusing. But my question is, who's coding it? Like, who's actually coding these things? Is it the operator who's putting them in? Is it the FAA sorting these? Is it a person? Is it AI? Who's really coding these things and making all the Q code things? Maybe it gets better in the future. I don't know. Would love to know your thoughts about this and the changes coming. Any other information you guys have on NOTAMs that you'd like to see, I would love to hear it because this was a video suggestion from a viewer. So thank you so much for that. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a fantastic day from Laura at Aviation 101 with Laura.